Hi everyone, today we're going to do a couple quick videos that I have probably um, underestimated the knowledge of what's come out lately on hole saws. Okay, hole saws is as simple as it is. It is a round um, outside band of teeth. They basically take a saw blade, spin into a circle, weld it shut into a circle, and now we have a hole saw. So we're not going to get into brand or anything like that. We're going to get into type and what they should be used for. Okay, so you're going to see some names. This is kind of your all-around standard one that kind of does um, all kinds of wood and metal. So if you've got nails in the wood, you've got, you're trying to cut through metal, you're trying to cut through wood or things like this, stay away from stucco, block walls, things like that. They will just completely tear off in seconds. So this one is um, a bimetal hole saw. So this is designed to work on anything that is you know softer metals and uh any kind of nail impregnated wood works really well but they cut really really slow through wood so definitely think and then side holes are actually so you can get a screwdriver in there and pop them out so you'll see all different kinds of versions of them you know allowing you to kind of pop the wood out of there so that's kind of our first idea these are our probably our cheapest you want to stay away from the ones that are just standard high speed steel they will burn up in 10 seconds. You want the ones that are actually bimetal. So this is probably the number one thing you should have on your truck when you start, okay? So I always keep a full set of these on my truck. Then we're gonna get into the next level of these guys, which is a carbide tipped bimetal hole saw. These pretty much work for just about everything that you need to get through the day. These will work on stucco, they'll work on wood, they'll work on nail impregnated wood. You know, that's kind of a real important thing. These guys are awesome. A lot more expensive, but will last 10 to 12 times longer, or 10 to 20 times is what it says on the box probably, than other guys. Um, definitely you can find these at your Home Depot's, your Lowe's, all those kind of things, different brands out there, but definitely having these little itty bitty tips are carbide tipped on the, other, on the edge, just like your skill saw blades. If you guys ever remember, high speed blades where they burn up, you'd cut three two by fours and the thing was already smoking. And then we got carbide. Carbide is an amazing product that works really well. So this might be somewhere where you're trying to cut through a piece of stucco and then you hit the, the, two, the uh, plywood behind it. This is always a good idea or the little metal bands that sometimes are in, plywood, are in stucco. So after I cut through the stucco, I come back in and do that. Again, not a stucco blade, but you just kind of the idea that you can kind of use these in combination to kind of help your stucco blades last a little longer. Okay, now some specialty blades that I think every electrician should have is the blades that are designed. There's usually packs of them now that work in half inch um, pipe size, three quarter pipe size, like this happens to be a three quarter pipe size. It, it's for the hole that goes, that it, it takes up a hole, which is actually one and three eighths. So that's a three quarter hole for electrical pipe, but it's one and three eighths size. So these, and then they've come in one inch. So you'll usually see these in three packs. These are the greatest tools ever. I love these. They cut super, super fast. They have the spring in there that helps pop the little piece of metal out. You do have the holes on each side to pop out the piece of metal if you need to. But I really like these when I'm cutting into an electrical panel because it has this ridge around the outside. The ridge allows that when I blow through the wall, let's see if I can show it here, that it will hit that ridge and stop it so I don't jump all the way into the panel and maybe damage some wiring inside. So definitely an advantage. Now where's the next step in this guy? Are these guys. So this is a carbide tipped version. Now these cut really, really fast. I'm going to tell you right now, these last really, really long. But the problem you'll have is that the teeth, because they're wider, take longer to cut. Uh, and I definitely recommend, you know, being careful, running in that at a mild, you know, speed, so you're not tearing them up. They're not meant to be ran at super high speeds and tearing through things. This is a metal only version. It is not meant to be ran in stucco and some of the other ones that we'll kind of get to here. So again, spring in the middle, your bit through the center. I always recommend running these, they come apart drill your hole in the center, then put your bit on, 
and then lock it down, okay? So it actually then drill your hole. So you're not coming in, because what ends up happening, and this is pretty much every hole saw across the board, just a good practice, is to take off your, and just run your bit in, or if you have a bit, these most of these are gonna run uh, quarter inch bits in the center, your pilot hole. So a lot of times I keep a quarter inch bit on my bags all the time. So I can run it through first, so I don't have that constant jarring of actually when I'm pushing, 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 then it finally breaks through and hits the teeth. A lot of times you'll snap your bits, your pilot bits here. And if you're doing a lot of that and you're trying to figure out why that's happening, pilot hole first, and then use that just as a guide to go through, okay? So that's really important. So keep that in mind, guys. We definitely want to uh, keep that in mind. So when we get up into our next guy here, um, we kind of, so we've kind of gone over some bimetal. We do a lot of metal cutting in electrical work and in general, just in the world today. So you've got your, your bimetal blades, your carbide tipped blades for metal. These will also work on wood and things like that. Look on the box, make sure you're buying the appropriate one. And then we get into items like wood cutting bits that are actually useful. And that's where I get into these. These are my favorite bits. I love these things. As you can see, they're, they're plugging worn and I wear them out a lot. These guys are awesome. So this is the three tipped. Sometimes you'll only see one tooth on them for cutting through wood and stucco and block wall and everything else. They don't really work on concrete very well as far as rock wise, but they will cut through stucco, block wall, things like that really, really well. This particular version will not cut nail impregnated wood though, so you gotta watch out for that. But these are so fast. So these are pretty much replaced all my bits for cutting through stucco, because we do a lot of stucco entry in my job. So we're cutting through the stucco. These will also cut through the wood behind it. So most of the time you'll see stucco. You'll see the little mesh that goes in there, the chicken wire. And then behind that will usually be a piece of plywood. This does all of it really well. And it does it super fast. Probably the fastest bit on the market to be able to do that. So again, you're cutting through. Um, a lot of times what I'll do again is cut with a bit for doing stucco, um, you know, a carbide tipped bit. We'll show you that in, a, in our next video here when we talk about more twist bits. Um, and then this will cut right through the stucco, cuts right through the, the little mesh wiring there, and then goes straight through the wood. Will not, it is not designed for cutting through nail impregnated wood. You'll hear that a lot. So that's why you want to buy metal. We might have to come back if we hit, you know, an actual piece of, uh, you know, nails or something like that. We want to go ahead and go back to a bimetal blade to finish that guy out if we hit that going through the wood. So something to think about. So really cool. Um, one feature this guy has that a lot of the other versions don't is that this guy allows you to be able to take, and let's say you cut a hole this big. Maybe you're doing a panel, electrical panel that has a two inch or has an inch and a quarter pipe going through the roof and you need to widen that out to a two inch size, this guy will actually slide down inside and screw in. And now you're able to make your first, you put this in the hole as your guide because now you can't use just the bit. It allows you here. And then once you've got that inside, you can go ahead and the outside bit will cut. So this becomes your new guide. And it's really kind of a cool feature. You take out the, there's a little uh, rubber O-ring you take that guy out and you just slide him right down on top. There's a couple different companies that make tools for this, but this works really, really well if you're in a bind where you're trying to open up a hole that's already there. You can always use the old plywood trick, but that's kind of where, where we start out at. So really good for wood, um, stucco, block wall. Then we kind of get into our dedicated masonry type bits. We have our carbide and our diamond tip. You know, you'll see more, probably more at your Home Depot's, Lowe's, things like that. You're going to see more of the diamond tipped. These work really well in ceramic tile. So if you're trying to cut through ceramic tile, you can actually take the bit completely out in the center. Or if you're getting into more of the stucco world and that's all you're cutting or the block wall and you're trying to cut through some of those harder or concrete walls, these work really well, which are the carbide tipped ones. They're a little bit more aggressive, but they tend to wear out a lot, lot faster than the diamond tipped ones. 
but the diamond tip ones cut slow, so they're more just on the speed of the ideas. These are not meant to be ran in hammer drills where you're actually going to be pounding them and twisting. These are just meant to be twisted and slowly cut through as they're chipping out the board as it's going through. But these are only for uh, stucco, block walls, concrete type situations, or let's say a situation where you're cutting through sheetrock. Sheetrock, these work really well and they don't tear up. A lot of these other bits will have hard times with sheetrock. These guys do not. They'll cut through sheetrock like crazy. But uh, if you run into a wall where you're trying to cut stucco, or I mean sheetrock, this is a real good idea. They last really well in that area. Um, I use them a lot in stucco. I use them a lot in, if we're doing like, let's say bathroom remodels where you're dealing with tile, this is always a good idea, or tiles maybe on the outside of the house, or hardy backer board that you'll see on some of the houses nowadays. Again, once we get through that item, that harder material out there, we're going to have to follow it up to get through the plywood on the outside of the house. That would be with like a bimetal blade or something like a carbide tipped blade for getting through wood. So hopefully this helps, guys. I mean, this is not, you know, we're not going over. There's lots of blades out there, lots of different hole saws out there brand wise. But I'll tell you, the biggest thing is picking the appropriate hole saw for the job. You're going to have such an easier day. You won't tear up your blades. I don't know how many times I get guys coming back to me and their bimetal blades look like this diamond blade where they've literally taken every single tooth off. That is because they're kind of trying to cut through something that this was not meant to do, usually stucco. And it will not, I've watched it cut through stucco and just wear out a blade in 10 seconds and throw the thing away. And it didn't even cut all the way through your hole. So keep that in mind, guys. Buy the appropriate hole saw for the job. And maybe maybe you only need that one for your, your doing, or you maybe you, only, you do all three quarter, 99% of the time. You just need to buy that one. And you notice I've got most of mine that I use for every day at work that are already put in the bit I'm gonna be using them in. If I'm gonna lock it into a rotor hammer, you know, whatever that may be, it allows me to be able to do that. And I have them all set up, like I keep these in my bags because I know I'm gonna be using most of my stuff is gonna be three quarter and one inch. So I keep those on my, on my bags. So as always guys, have a great day. Like and share, ask your questions down at the bottom. I'm always happy to answer, but uh, have a great day. We'll talk to you later.